Live, local, breaking news. This is WIFF News 4 at 11. Here comes the storm system. Helene making landfall and now moving north. Coming up, I'll show you impacts town by town. But just not often to see it running like this. Heavy flooding across the upstate and western North Carolina as rivers start to overflow. We continue to track the impacts of Hurricane Helene. Flashing lights and the sounds of chainsaws here in Spartanburg as Duke Energy crews work to not only restore power, but they are working to chop down some trees they say run the risk of falling as Helene makes its way here. I've directed FEMA to work with the state partners to take proactive measures to ensure the communities in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, and other states have the support and the resources they need. President Joe Biden speaking on Hurricane Helene today as the storm picked up steam in the Gulf of Mexico. The president declared emergencies for several southern states ahead of Helene's landfall. Thank you for joining us at 11 for a special edition of WIFF News 4 as we continue our extended coverage of Hurricane Helene. The storm made landfall in Florida tonight at about 1045 as a Category 4 storm. Heavy rain, high winds and flooding are being felt all across the southeast. So we have live team coverage tonight as we are tracking the impacts of Hurricane Helene as the storm hits our region. First, we go to Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice with the latest track. Yeah, the storm system continues just to be a beast down toward the south. It's making landfall right now. Look at the tornado alerts in the low country of South Carolina. These bands that are going to come in are going to give us that threat. In fact, we're under a tornado watch in the southern parts of the upstate, including Lawrence, Greenwood, Abbeville counties. And as we move forward, we're going to have to watch that threat. Heavy rain, in addition to this severe threat, which has us in the level two medium risk for tornadoes, will need to be watched. And these bands that come in will progressively get a little bit more more fierce. One rolled through. Here comes another one in Greenwood and Lawrence rolling on in and each one that comes through will possess a little bit more wind and a little bit more torrential of the rain. So Hendersonville to Brevard to Columbus seeing some heavy rain. Each one of these green boxes, which at this point basically is the entire area presents flash flooding. Our creeks, our streams are to record levels here in Western North Carolina, including the Swannanoa, the French Broad River and the Broad River at Lake Lure and Chimney Rock. Farther south, we've got flooding happening right now across the northern part of the upstate with additional rain on the way. Latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center has wind sustained at 140 miles per hour. It's made landfall. Now it's making its way up toward the north. As we look at the latest track, which just came out from the National Hurricane Center because the box is a little up, up to kind of upset, if you will. 65 mile per hour sustained winds over Atlanta, Georgia, which puts us a little bit lower than that, probably 40 mile per hour sustained winds winds with gusts even higher. This thing's going to race our way and bring those strong, strong winds into our neck of the woods. The hardest time frames are 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and through about 7 or 8 a.m. Coming up, I'll map out what you'll expect in your town and the new time frame for you. Chris, thank you. Continuing coverage of our breaking news, a day of steady rain with Hurricane Helene still hours away. Greenville's Cleveland Park is closed because of the weather and that rising river level. We go to our Nate Stanley in Greenville and Nate, you're there keeping an eye on the Reedy River. That's correct. And standing right now on Main Street, the rain has calmed down. We're in a bit of a lull right now, but we do have video, as you mentioned, of Reedy River and what that has looked like today just surging full of water earlier this afternoon along the rapids there at Falls Park. People were out today still with rain jackets, umbrellas, taking in that river, taking in the weather today. As I mentioned, the rain has been up and down. It's been on and off. Right now we're in and off, so some people are coming out, uh, getting to their cars while the rain is down. We met a couple just a few minutes ago who drove from uh, Idaho down to Atlanta and then Atlanta to Greenville. They said that driving uh, from Atlanta to Greenville, they saw a lot of wrecks, a lot of the weather impacting the, the travel there. I spoke with a family earlier today from Ohio. They had driven down for a football game this weekend. They say that they're going to hunker down and that the weather actually changed their travel plans today. Here's what they had to say. And we looked at the storm and said either come in this morning or wait till Saturday. 
we figured we'd be here for the storm, that'd be okay. So we got up early, um, drove here, got here around noon. And uh, what a neat town. I, I hope I get a little more time to check out Greenville. And we obviously hope that, that he has a good time in Greenville as well as everybody else here. Nigel Carroll. Nate, it is 11 o'clock on a Thursday night. Tell me, are a lot of businesses along Main Street open? I know I saw a car drive past you a little while ago. Are people out? So people are definitely out. There are definitely some cars, but as you mentioned, for a Thursday night, not as many people as you would expect if the weather wasn't what it was today. We had seen, as I mentioned, people coming in and out of local bars and restaurants that were closing at this point at a normal time. Um, but in terms of the weather impacting them closing early, does not seem like that has impacted much. People heeding the warnings of if you don't have to go out tonight, if you don't have to be on the roads, do not be out. Reporting in Greenville, Nate Stanley, WIFF News 4. Hey, thank you very much. Now, some folks live in low lying areas and there are concerns over flash flooding, high rivers, so shelters are opening up in the upstate. Mark Whiteman is in Greenville County, right at the Greenville Pickens County line, really, at one of those shelters. Mark. Yeah, hey, Nigel and Carol, you guys just mentioned it. we're at Crosswell First Baptist right on that Greenville Pickens line. We have seen a few folks coming and going this evening, and we just heard Chris discuss the record levels of flooding in western North Carolina. Certainly the Saluda River above Old Easley Road expected to get near record levels overnight and into the early hours tomorrow morning. That's right along Highway 123. And to that end, emergency management services in Greenville County, along with the American Red Cross, have opened this temporary shelter again. It's at Crosswell First Baptist off Highway 123 and Fish Trap Road, very close to the Greenville Pickens Speedway if you're trying to get a frame of where we are in the area. And we are dealing with right now quite a bit of calm, but as we've heard discussed all night long, this is a fast moving storm, so please don't let that lull you into a false sense of security. We are anticipating these rivers reaching high, high levels, emergency levels of flood, and certainly near record levels overnight. So to that end, here we are here at this shelter where there is a place to stay. If you are concerned, if you feel you might need to evacuate your home tonight, if you're worried about electricity or just your own safety, the American Red Cross wants you to know there is a safe place for you here. There are cots, there are blankets, there's water, there's snacks. There is a place for you to spend the night, a place that will be open throughout the course of the storm to ride it out. The American Red Cross wants you to know there is a place for you here. There are reports of flooding along the uh, Saluda River, so they asked us to open a shelter here. Uh, so anybody who is going to be impacted by the storm or concerned about their safety during the storm are welcome to come and they can stay here for the night uh, until it's safe to return. Not a lot of rain in the area right now, but as we were driving down here, we did experience some ponding. Obviously, it's a little bit darker on Old Easley Road, so if you are coming that way, please stay vigilant. Please stay safe on those roads. And an important reminder, you do not need to pre-register. You can just come on down, sign up here, and there will be a place for you to stay. We'll have much more coming up, but for now in Greenville, I'm Mark Whiteman, WYFF News 4. Mark, thank you very much. We understand that Duke Energy has a lot of crews in place, ready to go when and if needed, and some of them have started work early. That's right, and our Rashad Williams is out there with some of them right now in Spartanburg County. Rashad. Yeah, I got to be honest, my heart's racing pretty fast right now. I would say about a minute ago, we heard an explosion, and this sounded like fireworks going off right behind us as crews continued to work. We all jumped and we looked, and then all of a sudden, the power came on. So the lights were out in this area, homes without power. The street light was off here. Now you can see the street light is on, so it's given us a little bit better view as to what we're seeing. So uh, right across the street here, as crews are working, we showed you that tree last half hour that they were in the bucket, they were chopping that tree down. There were two trees they were concerned about falling as Helene makes its way closer. That tree is completely gone. And the last piece of it we heard fall into uh, a creek uh, that is right over in this area. It fell in there, but I want to commend the work that some of the Duke Energy crews are doing out here. This is a dangerous job. As some of the tree parts were coming down, we saw crew members scattering, trying to dodge those parts. We heard some of them hitting the trucks that are parked there. And I want to make a note, Vanderbilt Road obviously is still closed as crews are continuing to wrap up. Some of the trucks left, they're headed to a different destination, uh, but it has been 
uh, a wild night here in Spartanburg from some of the things that we've seen. Just a glimpse again of some of the work that Duke Energy and the crews go through as they not only prepare for storms, but as the storms get here, the work that they have to do. So we're going to continue to bring you coverage here on a street that now has lights in Spartanburg. Rashad, thank you. We are seeing storm damage tonight in Anderson County. And our Maya Payton is live in Anderson County with more on the damage there. Maya. Yes, Nigel and Carol Concord Avenue has felt the impact. I'm going to show you just here below the road in sign. You can see the tree has been uprooted and fallen straight across. Now, sadly, lights are obviously are not on our side right here, but I'm going to try to paint a picture. If I start from right here, even though it begins further down, I'll walk clear across and you'll see how big this tree is blocking both sides of the road. The county has blocked this area off. I've seen cars try to make their way through here from there's four entryways onto this street. People have had to turn around, find another alternative route to get to wherever they're going. A reminder to stay inside because like county leaders told you earlier, a tree can fall at a moment's notice. This is just an example of what will happen with strong winds and a saturated ground. It will, it's likely to get worse as time goes on. So just keep that as, in mind as you're making your way out. The worst time is around midnight, 2 a.m. Um, if you've ever been in a storm, especially in the south where there's not many street lights, it can be scary, especially when those trees start to pick up with the wind. You're seeing that flash flooding and maybe you miss a turn and next thing you know, you're off the side of the road. Well, I mentioned lights earlier. Take a look around. Very little street lights. I think there's one across there. You can't even see it. But again, speaks to the areas that do not have that. So if it's not a must to come outside of you guys, do not do it. We have more damage to get to here in Anderson County, and hopefully we'll show you that just ahead. In Anderson County, I'm Maya Payton, WYFF News 4.